My name is Melissa Maker. I am an accidental cleaning expert and I want to welcome you to the Clean My Space channel. Today, we are talking about how to clean the humble bathroom sink. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and stick around to the end of this video where I will share with you a strange conversation I had with my dental hygienist about the bathroom sink and surrounding area. Because I'm in my own house cleaning, my bathroom sink here is in pretty good shape, but if you're cleaning a bathroom sink for the first time or you've encountered a particularly challenging sink in your home or a home you're cleaning, you would wanna pre-treat first. And choosing the product uh, would also be informed by how dirty or messy the sink actually is. If it's very dirty, very heavily soiled, you might wanna use a product like Barkeeper's Friend. If it is just okay, you can use a little bit of dish soap. If it's just okay and you want a bit of extra abrasion, you can use dish soap with a little bit of baking soda, which is what I'm going to use. I'm gonna do that by just generally applying it on the surface. I'll let it sit for a minute, and then I'll flip over to the scrubby side of my sponge and start to scrub. Now there are several different ways that you can approach cleaning the basin of your sink. The method that I described is really great for regular maintenance. Even if you have a sink that is quite dirty, the same thing should work. However, you can leave your product wet on the surface to pre-treat for just a little bit longer, five, 10 minutes. As long as it's wet, it's really gonna help break down some of that scummy buildup on the inside of the sink. Also, I'm using a double-sided non-scratching sponge. I don't wanna scratch the surface here. You could also use a microfiber cloth if there wasn't much buildup that you needed to remove. You could even use something like a dish wand. So lots of different options here. The idea is you just wanna make sure that you can get your sink scrubbed and clean and ready for the next step. And just before I get to cleaning the drain, I'm very curious, so please let me know in the comments down below. How do you feel about your toothbrush falling in the sink? Does it gross you out or are you just like, and you rinse it and move on. Let me know what your thoughts are. For me, if my Invisalign, which I wear at night, or my toothbrush fall in the sink, I have to do a bit of extra cleaning. It just, it really grosses me out. But Chad, my husband, for example, unfazed. This is where you might want to use a cleaning toothbrush. The drain, the overflow, and the drain cover have little nooks and crannies that need to be scrubbed. So you can use the same cleaning solution that you use to clean the basin of the sink, either a Barkeeper's Friend, another cream cleaner that you like, or the baking soda dish soap combination. By the way, that's an equal part mix that I'm using. Uh, and you can just give that a really good scrub. There's a lot of like sludge and slime that kind of builds up in there over time. It can be sort of brownish or black or discolored. It's really nasty. It's, it's like really one of the nastiest things. So make sure that you're cleaning that on a somewhat regular basis. It also helps to get rid of odors. And by the way, when you see it, you're really gonna never wanna see it again. So it'll be a good motivator to clean. Now the overflow is an area that we almost never think about cleaning. It exists so that if your sink fills up, water can drain through it so that you don't have an overflow. But uh, you know we don't think about it and toothpaste can drip in there and things can fall in. So you can clean it with a toothbrush or you can even wrap your pinky finger with a cloth and just kind of give it a clean out that way. As long as it gets some TLC every now and then, it'll look good. And of course, a bathroom sink cleaning video wouldn't be complete without talking about the shiny star of the show, the faucets, and of course the faucet handles. These areas get grimy for other reasons. I mean, your hands are dirty, they get soap on them or a toothpaste, other products, uh, and your hands are constantly using the faucet handles, so that gets dirty. And then of course, it is the supplier of water, so you're going to get some hard water or some mineral buildup naturally. So you've gotta deal with those two things. People always wanna see a shiny faucet. The easiest way to get there is to just put a little bit of vinegar on a microfiber cloth after you've cleaned your faucet. And to clean your faucet, by the way, I'm using the same thing, dish soap, baking soda. You might wanna be mindful of the finish of your faucet just to make sure that it can tolerate 
the product that you're using. For example, if you have something like matte black, which we have in our primary bedroom, or if you have brass, you might wanna use a specialty product that's good for that. In my bathroom, by the way, I just use a little bit of soapy water, sometimes a bit of vinegar, but I try not to use anything abrasive. You'll notice when I'm cleaning this sink, I'm not so eager to rinse and dry section by section. I kind of leave everything a mess until the very end. And once I get to that point from the faucet all the way down to the drain, I will then rinse, give a nice final rinse to get rid of any of the grittiness from a cleansing product like baking soda or another cream cleanser. And then I will buff the sink dry. That is really the P.S. de resistance. And to do this job, I am using our Maker's Clean Duo Cloth. You might have seen me use it in our video that we just did on cleaning a bathtub. It's thick, it's thirsty, it absorbs so much moisture and it leaves the inside of your sink or any surface that you're using it on shiny and clean, which is why I love it for this type of cleaning job. I should tell you that they're still on sale at makersclean.com and I've got a link for you down below if you wanna check it out. When it comes to the faucet, something you might notice build up over time is calcium or lime scale. The way that you can deal with this is by using either a specialty product like CLR or you can use something like vinegar. Now the aerator, which is the little thing under your faucet that kind of controls the water flow, if you kind of tip your head and look under the sink or under the faucet, you'll notice that it's probably crusty. So you can deal with that by putting some vinegar in a plastic bag, tying it off with an elastic band and letting that sit overnight. The next morning you can kind of scrub it off with a cleaning toothbrush, give it a rinse and your water will run nice and free and you won't have that crusty buildup anymore. Uh, even if you unscrew your aerator, you might notice that there's some chunky, yucky buildup in there. You can just give that a good cleaning um, and put it right back on. My aerator, I actually can't unscrew. I need a special tool to do that. So just be mindful of that if and when you try to do that. The other thing you might notice is even around your faucet area or around the handles, if water has been sitting for a period of time, you might get that buildup as well in which case you can use a similar product or you can use vinegar soaked in a, or on a paper towel, just let it sit for a little while and then scrub it off. But of course, if you have a natural stone surface, you can't do that. So tomato, tomato, just approach with caution. I did promise you a story, a crusty story from my dental hygienist. So I'm sitting there in the chair, getting my teeth clean and we were talking about flossing and she said to me, do you know that I have quite a few patients that refuse to floss because they don't like seeing the bits of food fling out from the floss and land in the sink or on the mirror or on the counter? And then we both kind of shuddered and then she kept cleaning my teeth. But I just wanna say, if you floss, you can easily rinse your sink. You never have to look at that stuff again. And it is not living in your teeth, it is now somewhere in drain town. So that was just a gross story that she told me and I had to share it with you. Since we're hanging out in the bathroom, you might be curious on how to clean something else in here. So I've got this video, which teaches you all about how to clean your bathtub. So go check that one out. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the Clean My Space channel by clicking this button. We would really appreciate your support. And you can also visit Makers Clean where our duo cloth is available as well as a variety of other high quality microfiber cleaning tools. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.